Hey everyone, welcome back to the Out of Spec Podcast. It's great to have you here. I'm your host, Francie, and today we're getting curious. We always talk about things electric vehicles here. I love to host interviews with experts in the industry who are working to make it what it is, as well as everyday people who have chosen to go on EV road trips or buy an EV or lease an EV, and of course, bring you breaking news. And sometimes I just wanna get curious and figure out, hmm, what's going on? What numbers can we put together to better understand where we are on the timeline of EV adoption in the United States specifically. We do take a global lens, but today we're taking a US-based uh, perspective today. And we're gonna talk about researching and look into the numbers about EV adoption rates, specifically EV registrations, and the number of EV charging ports. So the actual things that you can plug in, because that's one-to-one, -one, uh, car to port, that ratio amongst the United States, because as EVs, become more and more of the norm, we're gonna need public EV charging, level one, level two, and DC fast charging ports all over the US to match the, the growing demand. And cars sit around a lot. We're gonna have level one and level two charging around as well as DC fast charging. So today I wanna talk about the states with the most EVs on the road, the most EV charging infrastructure, and the least on the road, and the least EV charging infrastructure. So before we dive in, I want you to think about that ratio. What do you think it should be by 2030? What do you think it is right now? What do you think it's like where you live? How many EVs are there to EV charge ports? Noodle on that, and let's plug in. This episode is made possible by the support we get from Fort Collins Kia. If you are in the market for any electric Kia, not only do they never add market adjustments, they will deliver your car to you anywhere in the 48 contiguous states for out-of-spec viewers. More information in the link in the show notes. So when I started to think about this, I was just really curious, like what's the progress? How do states compare for EV adoption to EV ports? You know, is it is it growing as we expectedly really? Is it predictable? And what does this paint a picture on what we need based on current projections and estimates of the needs of EV charging for the EV adoption rates as they continue to grow? I've had podcasts recently where I talk about the specific market trends, but I'm gonna re reiterate those briefly because EVs are continuously popular in the US. And there are there's a ton of research that I'm gonna reference today and I'm just gonna give a shout out to everyone right now. Kelly Blue Book, Cox Automotive and the National Renewable Energy Lab as well as the US Department of Energy. All of this data is free to access whenever you want and it is really put together in a way that I think is quite accessible and interesting. So thanks to all those hardworking researchers out there that work to make this accessible. It is definitely a big deal. So market trends typically from the um, fourth quarter of 2023 showed that there were about 3.3 million electric vehicles on the road in the US. That is up from 2 million in the previous year, 2022, and up from 1.3 million in 2021. Continuous growth, that's what we're seeing. Even in some reason, regions, it might be um, modest growth as we've seen in the US and Europe as of late, but like China, they do not have modest growth. They have like 60% growth year over year, and that is crazy. So as we continue to grow EV adoption rates, people continue to lease and buy EVs, we're gonna need more EV charging. We of course talk about DC fast charging a lot with out of spec. It's important, and we have had some reliability issues in the industry and EV infrastructure lately, especially when, it's, when it comes to DC fast charging. But if you watch our road trips, you can see that's gotten a lot better. There is um, either more attention paid or better hardware, better software, better maintenance and operations of public EV fast charging, which is great. But level one and level two charging is just as essential. And we're going to need a far more level one and level two chargers in I don't know, all the re real estate that there is if we're going to match EV adoption by, say, the next decade, 2030. Level one charging is the really slower charging. You're going to see that at home, um, at multi-unit housing, stuff like that, where cars are really left for a while. Level two, more at like retail shops, at workplaces, where they're left for maybe eight hours. But in DC fast charging, of course, is where you spend like, what, 20, 30 minutes different use cases, different scenarios, and different needs in terms of numbers. But who's projecting all of this? Um, well, of course, we wanna think about the US sales at first. Uh, US vehicle sales have grown 11.3% year over year in the second quarter. We have amazing research to thank for a lot of these estimates. And one of them is Kelly Blue Book and Cox Automotive. 
So that's where I'm bringing this information from right now. We, in quarter two of this year, 2024, uh, reached a record high volume of over 330,000 EVs sold. This is according to their newest estimates. And that means that new EV sales accounted for approximately 8% of total new vehicle sales in the second quarter of this year. The same time last year, we were about uh, at about 7.2% recorded in quarter two of 2023. More research that we're going to look at today, especially when it comes to estimating how many EV chargers are we going to need? Like who's doing all that work? Well, the National Renewable Energy Lab is an amazing organization. They work closely with the Department of Energy. And this research from their 2030 National Charging Network estimating U.S. light duty demand for electric vehicle charging infrastructure report has been referenced in a lot of research as of now because they did a lot of different modeling to understand as EV adoption grows and these different scenarios might play out, how many EV chargers are we gonna need to support that? Of course, this informs a lot about the grid as well, but today we're talking more about this ratio. So they have different scenarios, low, medium, high, and it's basically 30 to 40 million EVs on the road that they're projecting by 2030. For the mid scenario, that's what they focused on mostly for the reporting in this report, and that's what we're going to focus on today as well. Their mid adoption scenario is 33 million plug in electric vehicles on the road by 2030, which means that they project we need 28 million ports for EV charging. That's level one, level two, and DC fast charging. So if you break that down into a little ratio, that's 28 ports to every 33 EVs. Okay, where, again, I asked you earlier, where do you think we are today? probably not there. I don't know. Maybe you were that's you knew that's what we need, but as you know, EV infrastructure is still not fully developed and we're still working, so we're definitely not at that ratio yet at least from what the information that we're going to look at today is showing. I also want to be clear that in today's episode, I'm going to consider charge points charge ports very broadly, so there's level 1, level 2 and level 3, but Uh, To keep it simple, we're just going to call them charge ports. But if you want to learn more, of course, you can check out this report by NREL. But you can see how they expect to break down this 33 million light duty uh, public electric or (laughs) plug in electric vehicles being on the road needing this 28 million charge ports. So the vast majority will be the private charging at single family, multifamily and workplace charging that level one charging that uh, NREL is predicting we need. So that's over 26 million ports. Second is the level two at neighborhood, office and retail, public destination charging a bit over 1 million ports, and then just under 200,000 ports for the public fast charging uh, at corridors and communities as they label it. So that's how they're breaking it down. Mostly we're gonna need the single family and multifamily workplace. That makes sense because this is where cars sit for the longest. But like I said, in this episode, we're going to keep it simple and we're going to stick to just charge ports. So more information is going to come from the U.S. Department of Energy. Of course, they collect tons and tons of data. And as you can see here, they have this alternative fueling station counts by state historical data on different kind of stations and uh, by state and fuel types. We have biodiesel, we have ethanol, hydrogen, propane, renewable diesel, and of course, electric. And that's what we're going to focus on today. So we're going to look at, all right, remember, keep that 28 to 28 ports to 33 EVs in mind as we consider all this. But I'm going to look at the top states with the most EV chargers and their EV registration data, as well as the states with the least EV charging ports and their registration data to see what those are like. So I'm going to sort this by highest to lowest. And of course, we can see off the bat, California. California has over 46,000 EV charge ports in the state. Comparatively, we also have this other data that I'm going to be looking at, which is the electric vehicle registrations by state. California has over 1,178 EV registrations or 1.17 million EV registrations in the state. So if we break that down, that's a ratio of about 1 to 26 charge ports to EVs. So that's pretty far off from what we're estimating. If we go over to New York, New York has over 12,000 EV charge ports and over 121,000 EV registrations. That's a ratio of about one to 10. If we go to Florida, Florida has over 10,000 charge ports, 
and over 231,000 EV registrations, putting them at a ratio of 1 to 23. For Texas, we have around 9,000 charge ports, but we have over 210,000 EV registrations. So that is, again, around 1 to 23. For Massachusetts, which is coming in fifth for EV registrations, or not really, but it's it's one of the top 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 eight is what I'm going to do. Massachusetts has over 68,000 EV registrations, over 7,000 charge ports, which breaks down to about one to 10 EV charge ports to EV registrations. Going on to Washington, they have about, they have over uh, 5,000 charge ports right now and over 141,000 EV registrations. That ratio is rounded to about one to 28 EV charge ports to EV registrations. Colorado, of course, is pretty renowned for their EV adoption rates so far, but uh, they're, they're not huge. Um, so they have over 82,000 EV registrations, over 5,000 charge ports, which breaks down to a ratio of one to 17 charge ports to EVs. For Georgia, that is coming in as one of the top states for EV registrations. They have over 85,000 EV registrations so far and over 5,000 charge ports. Again, that's around the one to 17 ratio. All right, so those are the top eight states for EV registrations and their ratios. I'll go over that, that again. It's charge ports to EVs. For California, it's 1 to 26. For New York, 1 to 10. Florida, 1 to 23. Texas, 1 to 23. Massachusetts, 1 to 10. Washington, 1 to 28. Colorado, 1 to 17. And Georgia, 1 to 17. These are a little bit rounded just for simplicity, but you're getting an idea that we're still definitely not at the... Uh, 23 to or 28 to 33 ratio quite yet. So what about those states with the least electric vehicle charge ports and charging locations? You might have guessed, I'm not so sure who you thought was going to have the least number of charging stations, but Alaska is coming in with just 124 charging ports. On the contrary, they have over 2,000 EV registrations. So that puts them at a ratio of 1 to 20, which is, again, all of these are a little bit rounded. But Alaska is definitely low registration compared to other states. I mean, California has over a million, 1.17 million. So what about North Dakota? They're coming in second with 214 EV charging stations. And if we go over here, we can see that they have EV registrations nearly 900, about 876. That is a one to four ratio. That's pretty good. <laughs> of course, the, the fewer EVs you have, the fewer charge ports. It does seem like these states with the higher registrations are having a harder time keeping up with the growing EV infrastructure as needed because we are considering level one, level two, and DC fast charging. South Dakota comes in next. They have about 250 charge ports. They have over 1,000, 1.5, 1,500, over 1,500 EV registrations. So that's a ratio about one to six. For Wyoming, they have about 261 charge ports. They have 1,080 EV registrations, according to the U.S. Department of Energy. So they're getting around one to one to four, a ratio of one to four EV ports to EVs. For Montana, We've got about 400 charge ports, about 4,230 EV registrations, which is a ratio that's rounded out to 1 to 11. For West Virginia, we're seeing about 444 charge ports, but uh, it won't even show up really on this document. But there are 2,542 EV registrations. I did get this data. Don't worry. It's just quite small, so it won't even hover, hover over it. If you're tuning in on YouTube, you can see that. But that is a, for West, West Virginia, it's a one to six ratio. I do know that this side of the country, this part of the country is very oddly lacking in EV infrastructure. It's very frustrating for EV enthusiasts out there. In Mississippi, this comes in with some of the lowest EV charging numbers. They have 423 EV charge ports. EV registrations though, they have over 3,000. So if you compare that, then we are going to have Let's see. Yeah, over 3,000 EV registrations in Mississippi. That's about a 1 to 8 ratio of EV charge ports to EVs. For Idaho, we are coming in at, let's see, we've got nearly 8,000 EV registrations, nearly 500 charge ports, and that is a ratio of 1 to 16. 
So that's getting closer to Georgia and Colorado has the one to 17 ratio rounded. Uh, but these other ones are closer to, you know, one to closer to one to one than anything. Um, if we are looking at this, I'll go over it just one more time for the states with the lowest EV charge ports. Alaska has a one to 20 ratio EV charge ports to EV registrations. North Dakota, one to four. South Dakota, one to six. Wyoming, one to four. Montana, one to 11. West Virginia, one to six. And Mississippi, one to eight. And Idaho, one to 16. Of course, I do have all this information. I'll just briefly share this Google Doc where I've done done the math here so you can see it. Um, but yeah, this is kind of uh, interesting stuff. Of course, if you looked at the numbers alone without knowing, if you just looked at the ratios alone without knowing the numbers of charge points and EV registrations, you might be like, wow, Mississippi is doing really well on their ratios of EVs to uh, EV adoption. And while technically that's kind of true, more information is obviously missing from this analysis. Where are the EV chargers are they all DC fast charging? Are they all level one? We got to get into the more details there. But again, I'm just giving you a big overlay picture. I want to continue to track NEVI installations and EV infrastructure as it grows. I want to be sure that, okay, how is EV registration picking up? And then how is EV infrastructure growing in that state, specifically port to port? Because with this kind of growing EV adoption and the growing need for public fast charging and level two and level one charging, we're gonna have to make sure that it's keeping up. There's a lot of challenges in the way from just upgrading and modernizing the grid to getting funding to put in these sites to also having folks in these states and in these communities prioritize having EV charging where they need it. Um, and I think that's going to be just a really interesting story that continues to unfold. So I just thought that was interesting. I wanted to look at what it really is comparing to because by 2030, we're gonna have uh, perhaps over 30 million EVs on the road. Maybe in six years, I'm going to look back and be like, man, those estimations were spot on or maybe they were off. I want to know what you think. This was just kind of an exploratory analysis today. There's not really any huge findings, but it is an update on the states with the most EV charging and how they're comparing with the EV registrations and the folks with the least EV charging and how they're comparing with their EV registration. It does seem to kind of match up, but there are some similarities in there that are interesting. I'm going to let you take the data as well and see what you think. Definitely let me know in the comments. Y'all are really good at analyzing data yourselves and interpreting it. So let me see. Uh, let me know what thoughts you have about it. Okay, thanks for coming along for just this kind of researching episode this week. I hope you enjoyed it. Of course, drive safely, stay charged, and stay tuned for another episode of the Out of Spec podcast very soon. Bye-bye, y'all.